I'll give up my seat to this guy. So, just just so you understand, we got the Alpha and the Omega. The oldest to win the Heisman Trophy, the youngest to win the Heisman Trophy. Welcome. Uh, I'm going to let you, Chris, if you don't mind, and you want to interject and, and use this opportunity to speak uh, to Jameis as well. Uh, but, uh, Jameis, how's your week been up here so far? Have you been to New York before? Uh, this is my first time in the city. I actually came down here for Cooperstown for baseball, so that was exciting. Got to see the Hall of Fame and stuff, but ain't nothing like the city. And it's really fun. So how has your week been? Been a little uh, whirlwind? I mean, it's been it's been good. I mean, it's had its ups and downs with uh, everything that's going on. But uh, the just this moment, you got to cherish it. And uh, I I thank y'all so much for supporting me through this whole thing. And uh, I'm glad I'm up here. I'm up here now with uh, Mr. Winky. <laughs> Of course, you are from Alabama. Uh, did oh, I assume Auburn uh, recruited you? Was there ever any chance that you were thinking about Auburn? I don't think it was no chance I was thinking about Auburn. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bo Jackson grew up uh, right near you, right? Were you a Bo Jackson fan growing up? I was a Bo Jackson fan because uh, when you come from Bessemer, everybody knows about Alabama and Auburn. But being from Alabama, period, and, and if you around that area, the Birmingham area, everyone knows about David Palmer. Bo Jackson and all those good guys. So Bo is is amazing. I, I actually got had the honor and the privilege to talk to him once, and it was amazing. Anything you want to ask Chris uh, about uh, tonight, or uh, anything else? Yes, Chris. Um, <laughs> how old were you when you won the high school? <laughs> I was twenty eight and proud of it. <laughs> proud of it. Um. Mr. Winky, <laughs> seeing that you are still a very attractive young man, what, what did you have to handle after you won this award? Yeah, I think it's, uh, on a more serious note, um, I think it's, one, it's, it's the most unique and cherished individual award in all sports, but it's a reflection, as, as I'm sure you would agree, uh, of the guys around you, right? And, you wouldn't be able to accomplish the things that you've accomplished unless you had great coaches and players around you. And, um, you know, getting to, to watch you and not getting to know you real well, but I will over uh, the next few years as you join our fraternity and, and I continue to watch you. I think, um, you know, the most important thing um, is that uh, tonight is going to go by in a flash. Um, and you'll have time after the national championship game to really reflect on this whole experience. And you've handled it as good as anybody can handle it with all the distractions of the media they ask you to do and all these different functions. And so one thing I say to you is take the same approach you do in a game. Enjoy it. Relax. Have fun. Stay true to yourself um, because you're fixing to join a pretty special fraternity and we're proud to have you. James, as I understand it, you've been diagramming plays in a little journal since you have been in, in middle school. I mean, so you're really into the X's and O's part of this. Why have you been so fascinated about the, that technical aspect of football? Well, growing up, I just knew that was part of being a quarterback. So uh, you had to prepare early. And uh, I was blessed by a great father of having both my parents. And he put me through all the quarterback camps at a young age. And I got, I got started from right then, and I didn't want to go down, so I just tried to keep going up. Chris, any questions that you have of Jameis about how he handles himself? No, just a comment on what you just asked him, because, you know, you don't, these things usually don't come out until a guy has success, right? That, you know, if, if Jameis wasn't the starting quarterback and having success, we probably wouldn't know about all those plays that he diagrammed, right? And so um, I be, I've become a historian of the game, and, and, um, not that I was a great one, but I tell people all the time, if you come into my office, the first note I ever took as a quarterback, I have that. I have those spiral notebooks. And you'll look, I've got about 75 notebooks in my office with every playbook that I've ever been in. Because I knew at some point uh, that I was going to coach, and, and I wanted to be able to create my own identity as a coach, but I wanted to call on all those experiences and things that I learned from great coaches. And so 
Um, it's interesting to hear that, you know, and then, you know, I heard that uh, on an interview, Jameis said that, you know, he's playing a video game and he, he built kind of his own guy and his own guy won the Heisman. Okay. That's what, <laughs> and, and, and don't believe me, a lot of kids do that, but guess what? They don't get to win it like he's going to win it tonight. So, yeah. Yeah. The point being is you've got to be a football junkie. The great ones are football junkies, and it's important to them, and it's important to make sure that uh, the players around them know how much they care about, about them. And, and all these things that go into, um, you know, it's always the best team that wins. It's not the best individuals, and I think James would be the first to say he's got a great football team around with great support staff. And um, But enjoy this. This is, this is special, man. It's snowing. The snow's coming down for you tonight. It's going to uh, be a lot of fun, and um, stay true to who you are. Dennis, talk about that team. We just hear so much about how it's family. Tell us about your football team. Well, I think it, I think it started in the spring. Because uh, when we got in this whole spring, everybody was talking about uh, the quarterback situation. Who's going to be quarterback? Who's going to do this? How's FSU going to stack up against other people? I mean, uh, people were down us early. Like, we was uh, on college football live early before all the other teams. And they talking about, well, Florida State lost E.J. Manuel. But they didn't know that we was getting a great team back. And uh, having the trio, Kelvin, Rashad, Kenny, having a veteran offensive line, and people are still underestimate our defense to this day because we have the best defense in the whole country. And when you, when you play around guys that work hard every single day and you, and you start it so early, you develop a brotherhood. You start gelling. Everything starts coming together. And then you don't look at what people said back then. You look towards the future and see what we can accomplish and we, we and see that we're reaching our goals and objectives that we set at the beginning of the year. And, and you guys get along so well. I understand Kelvin is a really funny guy on the football team. Is that true? Uh, Kelvin is funny, but the funniest person on the team is uh, Ronald Darby. Uh, Kelvin, he's more, he's more of a sarcastic type and he always, y'all probably always see him peeking at me because he, he would tell me to be quiet or make fun of me in a heartbeat. When I'm always throwing him the ball, so I have to tell him I'm not throwing him the ball. You keep talking to me. Like that. <laughs> Your pregame talk uh, speech at Clemson was quite uh, famous. Now, uh, do you have one ready for uh, Pasadena? I, I think that Clemson game is. Some people say, "What is, what is the game that's going to get you over the hump? What is the game that's going to get you to just start rolling down here? Even how early that game was in the season." I think that game right there showed our team, like, we can dominate everybody we play. All this hype, three versus five, all the noise. People actually thought we was going to be playing against noise. Like, they, they, they said, how is Florida State going to be able to handle the noise right. at, at Del Valley? But they didn't understand that Florida State was playing the Clemson, not Tigers, on the football field. Not in the, not in the stands, but, I mean, we'll play them anywhere. But I think, I think we got over there hump that game just because – Timmy Jernigan, that was the first time he stood up and said something to the team in that, in that game. And it touched everybody. And I was sitting, at first I was sitting in my locker. I mean, usually I'm playing around and everything. But I was sitting in my locker that game because I was like, hey, this is a big game. i got to concentrate. But when, Tim, when I saw Timmy Jernigan stand up and him being the, the quiet person he is, he stood up and said, y'all, let's do it. He said a lot of other things that I can't say. But <laughs> he stood up. And then that's when I got... I just got loose. I got loose again. I was like, I, mean, I got to say something to it. Not because I feel it's the need is a big game to say something to him. Because the other time I stood up and had a, a, a memorable time with the team was uh, the, the, the NC State game. Just because we lost that last year. And when Timmy did that, I just got comfortable. And I was just like, I'm in the zone now. It's time for us to go out there and do this. And I told him, we're going to do it. Because we on, we on the stage to, to show everybody, not just us, because we know that we – we good. We know that we have a lot of talent, but that stage that night showed the whole world what FSU was about back in his days. <laughs> so, one final thought about uh, Pasadena. Well, I just want to win. That's the basic thing, and then. I, I can't I can't come back to Tallahassee with an L on my birthday. That's right. Like if, <laughs> if it's the last thing to do. Now if it was on January seventh, January fifth, I mean it'll be like 
I'll probably be, I'll still be pumped because it's a championship game. We ain't been there in a long time. But this is on my birthday. <laughs> and, I, and I take that to heart because, I mean, I know it's a team thing, because, but on my birthday, that's an individual life thing. I, mean, I can't say the team can help me on my birthday. This is my birthday, but it's actually Eddie Goldman's birthday, Post Wade's birthday, so that's good. So uh, we plan to be celebrating the past on this. Well, guys, uh, I'll wrap it up because I know you have a, you have a, a busy day ahead of you. Uh, you don't just show up uh, in New York City in a place like this and uh, say, let's do an event. Uh, we're fortunate at Florida State University to have a network of hundreds of thousands of alumni, and a most special one uh, manages this building for uh, Walt Disney. And so I wanted to thank Maura Hayes and let you thank Maura Hayes for what she's done about uh, getting us this venue. Come on up. And Maura... She only wanted one thing, a football sign for her nephew, so... so there are certain privileges to donating this beautiful Good Morning America studio. My nephew will kill me if I need to talk about it. So there you go. No, I just want to say thank you all for coming. I, uh, this has uh, been a long-term uh, goal of mine to have you all in this facility, so I say thank you. Thank Scott, you're my friend. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Love having you. How about some flowers? Yeah, let's